Hello, everyone, and um, thank you very much for um, inviting me to Finland. Um, might have been nice if you invited me in June rather than late October, but there you go. Um, in fact, it's quite, quite funny because when I arrived yesterday on the plane, um, it, it landed in bright sunshine, a bit like when you get on a plane and go on your holiday and land in Greece or somewhere like that. And the temperature change was exactly the same um, as it was uh, like if you arrive in Greece, apart from instead of being really much hotter, it was really uh, much colder. So I had to get a bit used to that yesterday. Anyway, um, I'm very pleased to be here and I'm going to speak for hopefully about 30, 35 minutes uh, and leave a little bit of time for questions. But I will be um, at the uh, reception afterwards. So if there are people who have got more questions for me, um, I will hang around um, for as long as, um, as long as you need me. Um, just to say a little bit about myself. I'm a social worker. I spent most of my um, social work career in uh, a county called Leicestershire uh, and then moved to Hackney in um, 2001 uh, when I responded to an advert um, saying, would you like to come and work for the worst local authority in the UK? Um, who could resist that? So um, uh, that's when I ended up in Hackney and together with others um, we developed um, the Reclaim social work model which actually went live about 10 years ago. So, um, yeah, time does go um, very quickly. Um, so what I want to do um, today is really say, to start by saying a little bit about um, child protection work. And I know you've been talking about children, service, uh, children welfare services generally, but I want to concentrate on um, child protection. Say a little bit about that, and then explain a bit about what the uh, Reclaim um, Social Work model is. Uh, and say a little bit about the various research studies that have been done on it um, over the last um, 10 years or so. Uh, I know some of you know um, a lot about reclaiming social work, and some of you uh, might know very, uh, not very much, so hopefully I'm going to sort of um, uh, say sufficient to everybody that um, I'll say something that um, is a little bit provocative. So, to start with um, child protection, um, I think the first thing to say about child protection is it's a very, very difficult job to do. And policymakers throughout the world have not really appreciated just how difficult the um, job is. Uh, because what you're trying to do with child protection is you're trying, to, um, you're trying to manage risk to children. And you're trying to manage risk to children in situations that are uh, of great uncertainty. Um, you've also got to um, make relationships with families um, in situations where families um, don't want you around. They think that you might take their children off them. So actually making a relationship with a family um, in situations like that uh, calls for um, highly, skilled, highly skilled work. Um, and I think the other thing that is often missed is that if you're actually going to protect children who are at risk of harm, then actually what you need to do is work with the parents. Of course you need to know the children and know the children's experience, but it's the parents that need to change. And that's what um, child welfare, child protection, social workers um, need to um, concentrate on. And you also need to gain the confidence of all the other professionals that are working with the family. Because often um, families get referred to um, children's services, children, child protection services, because of how anxious other professionals are about what's going on in families. And sometimes the job of the social worker is to address those anxieties and work with um, professionals, whether they be teachers or health um, service people, and actually, um, actually sometimes just calm them down about what's happening. Because we know that um, people get very um, concerned when children are brought up in very different situations to perhaps the norm or perhaps how they've been brought up. And, and that's important as well. Um, and of course, the real job of social work is to help families change. Uh, and unfortunately, um, and it's not just in the UK, and I'm sure it's the case in Finland to some extent, but across the world, and social workers really want to help families change, but invariably they don't have the time or the support for them to do that well. Um, and I suppose if reclaiming is about anything, it's about creating a situation where social workers do have that time um, to help families, um, help families change. Um, there are many reasons why I think we've taken the wrong direction um, in terms of helping social workers do their job well. Um, and when I talked about we seven or eight years ago, I would be talking about England. But having been to many countries in, in the world who are running child protection services, 
it seems to be the same the whole world over. Um, that social work training doesn't um, best prepare social workers for the difficult task that they have to do. That often when something goes wrong, uh, what happens both nationally and locally is more procedures and more processes are put in place because a lot of people think that somehow a procedure or a process um, can help social workers deal with the complexity um, that they're having to deal with. Um, but that doesn't work. It strangles um, good social work practice. And then we have a situation, I think, where uh, overwhelmingly what social workers might end up doing is doing assessments rather than helping um, families change. And then in terms of structure, uh, many good social workers uh, are encouraged to apply for other jobs in systems, which mean they never do social work again. So a lot of first-line managers of social workers, a lot of, social work, a lot of people in other parts of the system, um, probably the best social workers end up um, not doing social work, and we think that's um, problematic. And um, that's not what happens in other professions, like in medicine, consultant, um, consultants always practice, always continue to practice. And part of the reclaiming model was to try to create a system where that was replicated um, in social work. So um, we, we tried to start with to um, tweak the way in which we were um, running um, child protection services in Hackney. But after a few months of trying to think about how we might think to do, do, do things differently, we basically ripped up our plans and decided that we would um, look at a more radical transformation of, um, of social work practice in Hackney. Um, and in order to help us do this, we used this very simple um, management model created in the 1980s by a couple of people called Peters and Waterman, and some of you may have read um, some, of their, some of their work. Um, and it's really a very, very simple tool to look at um, organisations and what matters to organisations. Um, since their time, there's been lots of management consultants who write very complicated ways of describing organisations. But um, when you actually peel away what they're saying, you often get back to this sort of arrangement. So we use this really to think about how we might recreate um, a different way of doing social work. And right in the middle of this is shared values. And I believe that shared values are fundamental, um, probably in any organisation. Oh, yeah. oh, brilliant. I'm really good at using things like this. <laughs> um, sorry, I don't know what I've done. I managed to turn it off. Oh, oh. oh maybe it wasn't. Okay. Um, no, I haven't been properly trained on this thing. Right. There. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so shared values. And, and I suppose this is about what is um, happening in terms of in t people's minds when they're running a child protection service. Um, so there's a couple of... Um, important research uh, papers that I think are, are, are worth thinking about. Uh, Paul Bywald Waters in, in England has done quite a lot of research about uh, what's the likelihood of children being taken off their families in different places in the UK. And his conclusions are that if you are a family that is um, interacting with um, child protection services in a relatively um, well-off area, you are more likely to have your children taken off you than if you're interacting with child protection services in an area that is relatively poor. Um, so I think that's quite um, significant. Um, John Flute's work in America, I think, is even more significant. And what his conclusions are is that there are four um, big um, influences in terms of decision to take children away from families. And they are, are of equal importance. And he says, the first is your own personal values. The second is the organisation values. Thirdly, what's happening in wider society at the time. And the best example in the UK about that is that when Victoria Climbier uh, was murdered in, in Harringay, London, uh, immediately the number of applications for care um, went up, um, I think, about 30%. About and fourthly, um, the actual facts of the case. 
So isn't this really scary that what John Flute says is that 75% of um, the rationale for taking children away from families is nothing to do with what's going on in that family, but to do with the values that are hinging uh, on the workers at the time. Um, which is why I think it's really important to think about when you're, when you're trying to, together trying to um, think about how you run a child protection service. You spend time thinking about these values. Um, now, um, so I think there's a number of things that need to be thought about. The attitude to risk and harm. And I don't know how many of you know um, a, 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 an English poet called Philip Larkin. Do, do any of you know Philip Larkin? Okay, just a very few of you. So I'm just going to read out the first verse. Um, he has an extreme view about families. And, and I am quoting him, so I do have to use a swear word in order to quote him. This is um, a poem called This Be the Verse. And I'll just read that first verse. He says, he says, they fuck you up, your mum and dad. They may not mean to, but they do. They fill you with the faults they had and add some extra just for you. So no family's perfect. Every um, family um, has, has issues and has problems. But of course, some families are able to overcome those issues and problems because of the circumstances they find themselves in, and others find that more difficult. And one of the big issues is, what should the role of the state be in family life? And again, across, there's cross-country cross research that says that, these, um, that the attitude to that is very different in different, in different countries. Um, and I think it's well worth thinking about, about that. So, there's also the issue, I think, that in terms of the reclaiming model, um, what we're saying is that you should be collaborative um, and respectful, uh, not just of the families you work with, but of your colleagues and professionals that you work with as well. And the reclaiming model in particular has a belief in families. We believe that most parents want to do well by their children. And given the appropriate support and help, uh, most um, families um, can keep their um, children Okay, so second S, strategy, um, and I think that it's well documented, not so much in child, child welfare services, but generally about organisational change, is that most good ideas fail due to implementation complexity. And in terms of my experience of um, organisations trying to implement reclaiming social work, um, this uh, is equally true. Um, in order to change what you need to change, to give social workers the support to do the job well. Um, it's not easy stuff. You're trying to change the culture of an organization. You're trying to Im change embedded views about um, how, things, uh, how things should happen. Um, and I think that um, the challenge is often more, not for social workers, but for everybody around social workers, particularly for, ma for managers and leaders, who, who will be asking to do a very different task to perhaps the one that they've been doing. Um, uh, up till now. In terms of some of the key things that I think you need to um, do first, well first of all you need to have an implementation plan to do this properly. You can't do everything all at once and we say that in terms of implementing reclaimed social work you're talking about a three to five year program. Um, but some of the things you need to do is you need to calm the system down. Uh, I know this is the case in Finland, it's certainly the case elsewhere, that social workers have too many children to work with. And it's them that are making the decisions about which families they work with at any one time. And that needs to be taken off them, and the organisation needs to make those decisions. They need to close many of the cases um, to child protection workers to give them the chance um, to work with the families most at risk. And the front door is pretty crucial in this, and there's been, again, another drift to ward um, uh, referrals into child protection services being done by um, a referral form rather than a conversation. Um, so we actually promote the idea that at the front door we need good, confident social workers to have conversations with people who feel they need to refer a family into child protection services because often, um, sometimes they obviously do need to come into child protection services, but often um, they don't. And that if proper advice, support, and also addressing a professional's anxiety about what might be happening in a family, if that can be dealt with at the front door, um, then that referee um, from universal services or from child welfare services and perhaps can feel confident about dealing with the situation themselves rather than that coming in um, to, um, to, to child protection services. And then edge of care, this is important as well. It's certainly important in terms of managing budgets. If you can absolutely give families the best possible help when they're at risk of 
breakdown. And sometimes, of course, the right thing to do is to remove a child from, from family um, and not give them that opportunity. But particularly in the case of teenagers, um, there should be an opportunity for way forward um, that doesn't use care. And if you um, develop a skillful services in which to do that and you avoid care, then you start to manage your budgets. You can start to have conversations about what's best for teenagers, what's best for families, um, rather than what happens in some um, places, which is what's best for, what's best for budgets. Um, but, the, but the outcome's the same. Save money by not using the care system. Um, and in terms of implementation, a couple of other tips that I think are important is, you know, people think that compromise is a good thing. And sometimes compromise is a good thing. Um, but sometimes it's not. And when people have made the journey towards um, reclaiming social work, where they try to implement reclaiming social work, um, they've often not got where they thought they were going to get to when they started their journey. So along the way, they've compromised. They've perhaps done the easy thing today instead of addressing the hard thing today. That's left the hard thing still to deal with um, later on. Um, and then attention to detail is also important. So knowing um, what the impact of any little thing might be, uh, which might be little at the time, but might become bigger in your journey, is really important. And um, you know, there's all that, there's that sort of idea, isn't there, that the butterfly um, flaps its wings in Japan, and we have a snowstorm in Finland. It's that sort of idea that you do need to um, very, um, uh, pay a lot of attention to detail. We talked about implementing reclaiming social work with military precision. Um, and although that might not be the best analogy in the world, I do think it has it's basically what we did. Um, systems. I don't know if people have heard of Atul Gawande, but he's a medical, um, um, a, a, a medic in, in America. He's written quite a lot of books about, about various things, including a book, Checklists. Um, and he was concerned <coughs> in the operating theatre that uh, they uh, developed lots of procedures about how to do stuff. And also they had very hierarchical um, a very hierarchical culture. So a couple of things that he says is um, you don't need um, huge procedures. If you are a skilled professional, uh, it's much better not to have a huge procedure but to have a checklist um, just to, so that you can use that when you think you need to remind yourself about whether you dealt with them. But I think more fundamentally, he also said that in the operating theatre, anybody, whether they're a nurse or, or anybody else in the auxiliary, should be able to make comments about what, um, what's going well and what's going wrong. Um, and I think that um, uh, makes a lot of sense in terms of the way in which you should develop um, child protection services. Um, so we need to reduce loads of processes and loads of procedures. We need to privilege professional judgment over the use of um, processes and procedures. We need to not use technology that's not helping social workers do, do their job. Um, and we also need to turn <coughs> decision making on its head. We need to make sure that um, social workers are given the, um, the freedom to make decisions about what's happening in families. And perhaps until it's the fundamental decision about whether a child needs to be removed or not. And in those situations, um, the organisation needs to give more support um, to um, social workers and their colleagues about how to um, respond to that. And you need to take the bureaucratic burden away from practitioners. Lots of research shows gained across the world that social workers spend up to 80% of their time feeding the bureaucratic machine rather than doing social work. And that needs to be um, turned on its head. And if you don't have, um, uh, if, if there are processes and procedures in place that aren't helping social workers do their job with families, then basically they should be banned. Um, because we need to clear the, clear the track so that social workers can spend that time. Um, <clears throat> Again, someone has said that social work is not rocket science. And I totally agree with that because um, rocket science involves a lot of very, very complicated equations that you have to get right, otherwise the rockets don't, don't work. But the thing about rocket science is that although it's complicated, it's predictable. Whereas in social work, it's complicated and it's complex and it's not predictable. So I think social work is actually harder than rocket science to do well. Um, and again, what we're saying reclaiming is it's not about providing social workers with tools, it's actually about providing them with opportunities to develop their skills. Because a skilled social worker will choose the tools that best suit any situation with any given family. Um, it's a bit like um, giving me a set of tools to 
um, to, to build a, a cabinet. Um, well, you won't get a cabinet. You can be a set of tools. Even the best set of tools in the world are not going to build a cabinet. Um, but if you give um, somebody who's actually highly skilled woodwork, then you'll get a good cabinet. It's exactly the same in social work. You need to develop the social work skill, um, and then they'll be able to use the tools. And you've got the sort of things that they, social workers need to do are the things I've already talked about. Building relationships under difficult conditions. Identifying what risk and harm there really is to children. Agree in a change approach with families. Because social workers don't change families, they help families change. This is, at the end of the day, it's the parents in the family, and sometimes the teenagers, but mainly the parents in the family that do the changes. And it's about social workers helping them do that well. And it's also about getting out of families quickly when it's right to do so. When the risk reduces, um, you need to get out because there's other families waiting for social workers um, to come along after that. And we need to um, do that in order, as I say, to give social workers the time to do their job well. They need far fewer cases to deal with. Style is, is, is S. It's one of the seven S's. It's really about the culture of the organisation. And this is the most challenging bit. This is where most organisations don't get it right. Um, because we're asking people who are not social workers, who are around social workers, to do a very different job to what they used to do. So there's a bloke, Bill Tate, uh, nothing to do with social work, who, who think, talks about organisations in terms of um, fish tanks and says that, um, and I don't know um, whether the hobby of keeping an aquarium is very popular in Finland, um, it's not particularly popular in the UK, but anyway, um, if you, you have a, an aquarium, fish, you need to keep the aquarium very healthy, and keep the aquarium very healthy, fish thrive. And what Bill says is this is the job of leaders and managers, to actually make sure you do everything you can to create the conditions where good social work can thrive. Um, and, and, and that really turns on its head <coughs> what many managers do um, across the world, because many managers tend to micromanage social workers, whereas we talk about giving social workers freedom to act. Um, and it's also important to have the things I've talked about, having strong values, but actually encouraging uh, robust debate about, um, about how to move um, things forward. And look after your social workers. Social work is a very scary job. When things go wrong, you know, the danger is in some countries that the finger gets pointed at the social worker. So it's highly emotionally charged, and social workers need uh, to be looked after by the organisation. So the style of the organisation quite vital in terms of being able to develop and claim it. Um, and I'd say, you know, that what everybody needs to have in the organisation, if they're going to do that well, is they need to have, um, not just in their head, the idea about what the claim is about. They need to have it in their heart as well. If it's not there, it's unlikely that you'll be able to um, develop the same sort of model um, that we able to act. Um, in terms of staff, um, again, it's about putting the right people in the right jobs and, and so many people, I think, uh, might not be in the right job. But many people will. Social workers, I think, thrive under different conditions. But sometimes, um, you're asking social, if you're asking social workers to do a very different job to the one they're used to, um, then you need to perhaps think about how you can develop them elsewhere. And organisations often give not as much time as they should to recruiting people into these positions. Um, so again, in, when we did in Hackney, myself and a couple of other colleagues, we did all of the recruiting into the organisation. We took this very seriously. We spent a lot of time doing it, um, making sure that we got um, the right people in the jobs. And of course, when you get the right people in the jobs, uh, it, you then need to give them freedom to act. You need to take away the constraints to enable them to do their job work. Um, and you need to make sure that you're continuously motivating and using social work. In terms of structure, again, um, we got rid of what I think traditionally are social work teams um, and we created social work units, uh, very small units consisting of a consultant social worker, a couple of other social workers, some um, family therapy or psychology input and a full-time unit coordinator to do with the bureaucracy. And the idea of this structure is that it's small enough for the consultant social worker to know well the families they are dealing with. Um, and that other issues about the shared caseload of, of, of the unit, um, 
role generosity in that anybody in the unit could do any particular different tasks, um, that there were shared values in the unit, um, and the unit were given freedom to act. Um, and again, this has been very challenging for other organisations to move to this, this system. And in particular, because in order for it to work well, you do have to calm the system down, you do have to give the unit an opportunity to succeed by making sure they don't have too many cases to deal with. So, since reclaiming um, began in 2007, there's been three major research studies. Uh, the first one was by Eileen Munro um, in 2010, and these are the um, findings. I won't go through them all, uh, but she showed that she um, demonstrated that we'd had a huge reduction in the number of children in public care, um, bureaucratic burden on social workers had been largely reduced, and uh, there was indication that better social work practice was going, <coughs> going on. Um, and then in 2013, um, the Tilda Goldberg Foundation, um, led by Professor Donald Forrester, um, paired Hackney with two other local authorities, um, and again um, showed that that the practice in Hackney was very different from the traditional authorities, um, that the systemic approach was um, ever present, that um, social workers were spending two to three times more working with families than in comparative authorities, and there was a high degree of um, social work practice. And then, um, out of that last research, Donald and I tried to do some work about, well, okay, so if not everybody can develop reclaiming in the way that we did, are there some indicators that we can give to people about what might be important in terms of developing a good, a good service? And we came up with these seven, um, seven um, features, uh, which all, Reclaim Social Work has all these features, but I suppose one of the debates is whether or not other forms of organisation can also do just as well with these conditions, even if they weren't um, doing the reclaiming model as per other. And then the last research, which had just been published, uh, followed our um, uh, innovation program uh, funded by the government, where we worked with five local authorities um, in England. Um, and the, um, the showing there was that uh, the reclaimed social work model provided better quality of practice than normal practice. And in fact, um, Donald has now developed a way, of, um, a way of looking at what good social work practice is and measuring it. And uh, the Units, um, social work units in these five authorities scored the highest ever score. <coughs> uh, I think it's about 15 authorities who's now done this, used this model with. They, they, they scored the highest ever. Um, and that um, <coughs> the reclaimed social work model, um, keeping families together, which is the edge of care model, is very effective. Um, and that um, a key aspect of the, um, uh, of, of the uh, research here was that the, was things like whole family working, um, family understanding they were part of the solution um, and work skilled at respect, respect and support of the family. Um, and the, the three sort of key things in terms of uh, units were reflexivity, um, unit meetings, and meetings seen by social workers. But this last research also um, drew attention to some of the issues. So none of the five authorities uh, really were able to make transformative change um, that is required. Now some are on a journey and some may get there eventually, but, but it just shows the challenge that you have. Um, <clears throat> and that leaders in these authorities were on one level supportive of reclaiming social work, but on the other hand that didn't seem to be enough to enable them um, to implement it. Um, and one of the reasons for this is the external pressures that leaders feel. Um, pressures in terms of inspection regime, in terms of budget, um, and um, um, ex um, targets that have been ex uh, externally um, put on. Um, and of course in the UK, and maybe here as well, and maybe elsewhere, no real national agreement about what's social work practice. So social workers, um, I think, love uh, reclaiming social work. Um, most will thrive given the opportunity to work with reclaiming. But implementation is difficult. Um, there's hazards every step of the way. Um, the journey is long, let's say three to five years, um, and um, complex to do. But if you really, really want to, um, you too. Thank you very much.
Kiitos. Hyvä, hyvä että tota, tämä ä, aamulla aloitettu ä, perinne tästä ylösnousemisesta jatkuu edelleen. Hei, thank you Steve uh, for your uh, very wise and inspiring uh, words. I'm sure that the audience would like to ask you some questions. So we have about 10 minutes for them. So please do ask. I'm sure we don't want to strengthen his, ter uh, his uh, uh, the stereotype of, of shy Finns. So <laughs> would be really nice if, if we would have some, some kind of discussion here. Well. They might be thinking for, for their questions. Uh, one thing that I would like to ask now is, is that uh, for the past couple of years, this uh, Hackney model has been discussed quite a lot here in Finland. And I'm really curious about whether other countries have also be, been so inspired by, by your work. Um, well, uh, inspired. They've certainly been very interested. So um, New South Wales and Australia um, are uh, have certainly um, been heavily influenced by uh, the repayment model um, and uh, there's been another state in Australia that has looked at it. Some places in America have looked as, as a Canada. So a lot of people are taking elements from it um, and the elements they take from it are usually the ones that are focused on social work, like for instance um, the social work, uh, the systemic approach. Um, not so many, not enough, focused enough on the organisation of changing culture. Um, but certainly, um, I think we are now moving towards uh, quite a lot of countries that are making sure that um, systemic approaches are much more integrated into social work training than they were a few years ago. Okay, thanks. Kysymyksiä. Siellä on yksi käsi ainakin pystyssä. Hyvä. Peli on avattu. So I'm a doctor myself, I'm a psychiatrist, so my question is very simple and pragmatic, <laughs> as the doctors usually are. Uh, so if I understood, oh, I have, and then I have one comment. If I understood, uh, you said that the highly skilled person, it, maybe I understood it wrong, but it uh, don't need checklists. And I think like that I'm a, a consultant for psychiatry and I have family therapist education and PhD and so on and so on. And, and at this stage I actually find out that the checklists are very important. And I think if I look parallel to medical that uh, in medicine like the highly skilled cardiac surgeons are using checklists and in the operation theaters checklists are used and they are found actually very important because I think the drive when I have been working with very um, families with very many problems and uh, in difficult situations and there's all this family and then there's all the people around the family and there's so much emotion and tensions and problems so it's very good to have some kind of structure and checklist that you are not drowned to, <laughs> to the, all this emotion and my comment was just that I think implementation is very important some good thing work can be done in some uh, organization, but the tricky thing is how to change this to the other organization, still, that it's still working and it's as good. No, no sorry, I, so obviously if you must have, I must have not expressed myself as well as I should have. I was absolutely saying what you're saying. Checklists are vitally important, but what's happened in social work is that instead of checklists, um, a lot of national governments have produced very long assessment forms, very long assessment forms with very detailed questions that expect social workers to use whether that's applicable to any particular family or not. What Gawandi says is you don't need those processed assessment forms that you have to fill in, but what is really useful is checklists. So I totally agree with you, checklists should be the way forward rather than complex um, and long assessment. Thank you. Sitten vielä olisi hyvin aikaa parille kysymykselle. Teillä on nyt, nyt Hackney-mallista on puhuttu niin paljon, että tota, nyt olisi oikeasti aika hyvä mahdollisuus mennä vielä vähän syvemmällä, jos Stiiville olisi esittää kysymyksiä. Okei, okay, well then in, in this case we will thank you and ei, nyt nousi vielä, hyvä, kiitos. Thank you, thank you very much for your presentation. I would like to challenge you of the thing that you answered last one so the processes when they are when we give guidelines how to do the processes we can protect workers that you don't need to take more than that sum of 
those so many families. So easily, if you have no guidelines, it is said, okay, you can take 20, okay, you can take 30. Well, we have a bit uh, difficult budget. Maybe you could take 40 families. So these guidelines may also protect the workers and the families to work well. How would you comment? Uh, yeah, well, I guess again, somebody I agree with. Um, we had very clear guidelines um, in Hackney about how many families uh, units dealt with. So, when, so the units that were dealing with um, children at risk of uh, family breakdown and on child protection um, plans, uh, those units dealt with 28 families. Uh, and more or less, you know, maybe 29, maybe 27, but about that. So we had very, very clear guidelines about that. I'm talking about, what I was talking about was you know, complex and very long assessment rules that were imposed on social workers, rather than letting social workers use their professional judgment about what they, how, how, what they needed to know about families. And so it was about that. I totally agree with you. And there needs to be guidelines about the number of um, families that social workers um, can deal with. Because otherwise it's social workers rationing themselves rather than the organisation. I think that should be social workers and the organisation. Good. So, yes. Nice. Third one. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to know, um, have you solved the problem when you find good ideas and, and uh, you apply them, how to distribute them, how to get them distributed <laughs> anywhere? Uh, obviously not. <laughs> um, I think that what, but what the reclaim model is, it's, it's not at all. It's an overall whole system approach. Um, and I suppose what I've come to realize is that the only way that people can uh, that this can, that can be implemented is if the people in the organization, the leaders of the organization, as I say, not only have the concept in their heads, but have it in their hearts as well. Um, you know, it's not something that can be manualized. You know, tools can be manualized, um, but this can't, because this is an overall approach about how organizations um, are created uh, in order to give social workers the best possible um, chance of doing good work for families. Um, so, no, I haven't found that answer, but if you've got it, I'd love to know it. Okay, nice. I think we can give another uh, applause to Steve then. Hyvä saada vähän jumppaa tähän lounaan jälkeen.